welcome friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are so happy you have joined us today. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul. We're an early retirement debt and mortgage free couple living in the Hudson Valley area of New York. And basically our videos just show you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. Today is Tuesday, which means viewers choice or challenge. And we have gotten several emails recently asking about frugal burnout, saying, you know, we're on this journey and sometimes we get a little discouraged and sometimes we get a little tired. And my answer to that is always the need to find contentment while we are on this journey. And of course, I can tell you, be content, be content. But today, what Paul and I want to do are actually give you tips and hints on how to be content in your home. The weather is getting iffy out. It's getting colder, especially here in the Northeast. The nights are cold. The days are getting shorter. And we're going to be spending a lot of time indoors. So the best thing we can do to help on our frugal journey is to find contentment here in the home. Why is that so important? The reason finding contentment in the home is so important is because if you don't, you're going to be looking elsewhere for that feeling of fulfillment. You're going to want to leave the house to go shopping. You're going to want to leave the house to take day trips. You're going to want to go out to eat. There are so many ways that we can avoid our home if we think about it. But what we want to do is bring the joy of the home back. We want to show you how to have that contentment, how to have that joy, how to have that gratitude about your own home. And then I'm also going to show you my quiet time bag and how I have created a quiet time bag. And I encourage you to do exactly that. What is a quiet time bag? Well, stay tuned because I am going to show you and tell you exactly what that is. Before we begin, I want to preface this video by saying I use the word home throughout. And I want you to understand when I'm saying the word home, that could mean anything. It could mean a house, it could mean an apartment, it could mean a room, it could mean whatever applies to you. It does not mean a house in the structural sense of a house. It means where you are dwelling right now. And I just want to make that crystal clear so that as you're listening to the video, it will apply to you in every circumstance, no matter where you are living right now. So let's get started. Number one, I think one of the most important things we can do is to realize how many positives our homes have. I want you to stop right now and think of two amazing positive things about your home. I'll give you a minute. I'm sure you came up right off the bat. For me, I thought, oh, I have such great counter space. And another one is I love our living area outside, our deck and our little garden. I love that area of our home. What we need to start doing is realizing and focusing the positives of our home. Well, first and foremost, that we even have a home. So right there, that should supersede anything. But instead of always looking at the negatives of our home, oh, I have another room I have to finish. This room needs painting. I have to get this done. The carpet's worn. How about we focus on the positives of our home? Think about the absolute parts of your home that you truly love and think about those and let the other ones be dealt with in time. Don't constantly, every day, bombard yourself with the negatives of your house right there that will lead to total discontentment. One of the first things we have to start with is stop being critical of our homes. We should be so thankful we have a home. So we really need to stop being critical of the things about our home and focus on the positives. Number two, your home is your haven. 
you want to be very selective about what you allow in your home. It's your home. We want to keep our homes a positive dwelling. We need to be vigilant about what we allow in our homes. And everybody is different. Everybody's limits are different. Paul and I, when it comes to like super violent movies on TV, we don't want them. We don't want to even have that playing in our home, if that makes sense to you. So we really try to be careful about what enters into our home, what we watch in the home, what we listen to. So that's just another tip to lead to that contentment. We want to keep the home positive. Number three, make your home relaxing. We have to look at our home as a place of comfort and warmth. Having beautiful, wonderful things is amazing and I'm all for it. But you also want to create areas of your home where people can just chill and relax. And you want to decorate it in a way that suits you, that makes you and your family feel comfortable. Now, what Paul and I do is to change decor seasonally. Now, when I say decor, I mean tiny pieces. Little odds and ends we will add. Winter time, Christmas time, summer time, autumn. That just adds a little bit of seasonal oomph to the house, a little bit of prettiness, a little bit of coziness without breaking the bank. And these pieces are reused year after year after year. Once in a blue moon, maybe after the holidays, we'll find a seasonal decor piece we'll add, but not very often. Let me show you how we do it. What I do for my seasonal decor is those wonderful Dollar Tree little foldable baskets they sell. I get the extra large size and they're perfect. I have like five of them for the different seasons. This is my winter one, which combines like snowmen, some Valentine decorations. And what I do is just change this out seasonally. They're just little pieces. We like it simple, country, rustic. So there's all little items that we can put on our mantle, on our end tables, bring seasonal decor in at a minimal price. Here's our 4th of July basket. Just a bunch of stuff again that has that Americana feel to it. And this goes up around Memorial Day and it stays up till Labor Day. And then what we will do, as you can see in this photo, we will take them and put them around the area. Some little cute pumpkins for our autumn, some artificial leaves. It just adds a little bit of decor to brighten up the home. So that's simply how we do it. We also have a couple of dark corners in our living room. So what do we do to brighten those corners but keep it at minimal cost? What we do is decorate our greenery, our live plants, with fairy lights. Let me show you. These are in autumnal colors and we buy them after the holidays and they just take a dark corner of a room and just bring it to life. They just add a little ambiance, a little light, a little color, and what a difference it makes. So that's how we decorate seasonally at a minimal cost. Though we have those items out for a season, then comes Christmas, then as I showed you, we do winter and Valentine's, just little touches here and there really make a difference to lead to contentment at home. Number four, I'm going to tell you, clean up your clutter. What happens in a chaotic home is we want to get away from it. That is not good because as soon as you leave the house, that means you're spending money, whether it be to eat, to shop, just even driving around with gas to get to someone else's home just a few minutes a day to pick up your room. What we do is before we go to bed at night, just take three or four minutes and pop in the kitchen and pop in the living room and take a peek around. And what we'll do, as I'll show you in this picture, we will just take our throw pillows, make them look neat and even on the couch, 
fold the blankets we use to watch TV over the arms of the couch. This is done so that when we enter the room the next morning, everything is in order. And we do the same thing for the kitchen. If there's dishes that need to be washed, we'll wash them real quick. Nothing worse than waking up and seeing last night's dinner dishes still in the sink. Take a few minutes every day and just straighten and declutter. It really helps to lead to contentment in the home. We all know this one, but I'm going to put it in here anyway. Stop comparing your home to others. Do not be envious or covet what someone else has. It will lead to the demise of your contentment. If you're constantly on Pinterest looking at decorating ideas that are super expensive, that cost tons of money, you're going to look at your own home if it is not up to Pinterest worthy pictures and start comparing and start feeling down. Don't do that. It will always lead to discontent and envy. And both of those are emotions we shouldn't even be dealing with, honestly. The trick with contentment is we have to stop striving for more and pursuing consumerism. Really, that's it. Stop always looking for more and stop always striving to be that consumer out there buying the biggest and best for your home. Don't continuously dwell on the past or worry about the future when it comes to your home. Oh, I should have done this sooner or oh my goodness, I need to do that. Concentrate on the here and now. Do what you can today. If it's only one thing, that's all it is. That is great. Being content is being content with all your situations. So that means dwelling on the here and now. Don't always continuously focus on I should have. Now, I need to is great, and that's got its own place and, and keep a running list of things that you do want to accomplish in your home. But we need to focus on the present, on the here and now to truly be content. Get every minute of joy you can out of every single day. Because living in the past or always thinking about the future, we're missing out on the memories we're making right here and now. What we need to focus on is the reality that our home is the area we eat in, we sleep in, we play in, we relax in, we laugh in, and it needs to enable us to feel contentment while doing those things. Do you drink tea? Do you drink coffee? Do you drink hot chocolate? Do you have favorite books you read? Do you have art you love? Surround yourself with these positives in your home. You don't need to spend big money on these things, not at all. You just need the home to become a focus of your life instead of something that we're just passing through to get to our next place outside the home. And I hope that makes sense. I talked to you earlier about creating a quiet time bag. Many of you have had small children or maybe you have small children now. I remember when our son was little, we would create a quiet time bag for him. Basically, it would have things in it that would keep him occupied if I needed to talk on the phone or I needed some downtime and he needed just some quiet activities to do. We even took it out of the home. We took it to church or if we had an appointment somewhere and we needed to keep him busy. Well, I think what a great idea is, is to create a quiet time bag for the home so that if you are feeling restless, if you are feeling bored, instead of automatically getting online and shopping, instead of automatically turning the TV on and scrolling mindlessly, instead of getting on the computer and staring at Pinterest and how you need and want more, you pull out your quiet time bag and you settle in a corner of your house with a cup of tea or cocoa or coffee and pull out things that you want to focus on, positive things that will just bring you joy and contentment. Let me show you what's in mine. So what is in my personal quiet bag? Well, I just use a simple little tote and you can use any tote you have. And then in mine, I keep a blank 
journal that just has pages that I can write notes, ideas for videos, recipes, whatever. So that stays in there. I keep packages of note cards. These were sent to me by one of my sweet viewers. She made them for me. So if someone just enters my mind, I can write them a quick note. I keep these in there all the time. A cookbook that someone gave me or I have in my collection that I haven't seen in a while. I'll pull that out to go through recipes, see if there's anything new I wanna try. I keep my journaling Bible in there. I keep any book that I'm reading at the time in there. And then I just keep a selection of different color fun pens in there. And that's basically it. And your little quiet bag is going to be filled with things that bring you pleasure, bring you contentment, that you just want to look at, you want to explore, you want to read. If you have an art project you're working on, that would go in there, a craft project. It's just to be used when you have some downtime. Instead of jumping on the internet, instead of turning on the TV, pull out your quiet bag and just really and truly have some quiet time. As you can see, they're just things that I enjoy doing that I don't always make time to do. Like my Bible journaling. I will read the Bible, but to actually take time and journal in it and draw in it and underline and highlight, that's a treat for me. To look through cookbooks and write down recipes I may wanna share with you all or, or try in our home. Write notes to people who are on my mind. Have pretty pens to take time and just scratch out ideas in that empty journal for YouTube or for life plans or what I want Paul and I to think about or look forward to. It's all in one place. I pick up my quiet bag and I go and sit for a moment. And I look through it and nine out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times, I will come away from having that little bit of quiet time with the articles in my quiet bag. I'm refreshed, I'm renewed, I'm content, and I'm ready to go on to the next thing. Give it a try. I, I think so many times we just automatically go to our electronics or we automatically think outside the home to find that contentment and joy. But if you keep that little bag filled with fun things, hey, stick a little bag of candy in it. Not something you have all the time. Or stick a little pack of specialty cookies in it. This is your quiet time bag. It's for you. It's just part of making your home become a haven. And you can even take it with you when you go. That's the joy of it. If you know you have a doctor's appointment or you know you're going to be waiting for someone, grab the bag, everything's in it, head out the door, you're good to go. And your waiting time has become creative, has become something calming, and, and it's a joy. And you can switch out things in that bag, you make it your own. But again, just another way to bring contentment into our lives on our frugal journey. So we hope this video was helpful, we hope it was encouraging. Now today's question of the day, I want you all please to give me at least one or two positives about the home you have. And yes, again, I will say it, we are so blessed to have the roofs and walls and floors around us. Every home is different and every home brings joy. Give me one or two things that you can say without a doubt, I love about my home. I love this. It could be as simple as, I love the picture of my grandparents hanging on the wall in our hallway. Or I love that I have measuring cups that all match the decor of my kitchen. It can be something so small, but we wanna start finding that contentment and joy with what we have within the home. So please share that with us. We thank you for being with us today. We ask if you enjoy this video, take a minute please and give it a big thumbs up. It helps us so much. Leave us a comment. Let us know what's going on with you. Let us know how you are. You know I answer every single comment. We thank you again for being here. We ask if you haven't subscribed, 
click that subscribe button and come on in. We'd love you to become part of our family here at Frugal Money Saver. We ask you to be safe. We ask you to be well. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you. We'll see you soon.